Good morning, folks. We begin in El Salvador. This occurred back in December, but the warning signs signal a very large burst about to occur again. They have begun evacuating. Top read is about a thick, dark cluster of matter. NASA and Caltech explain that the darkest shadow caster we know of will soon become bright baby stars. Some more notes and reminders about the meteor shower that begins before sunrise on Saturday. It may be a dud, could be an average meteor shower, or we could enter a significant dust stream and the shower could be epic. That goes for the moon as well. Southern Hemisphere won't see many meteors, but they may catch some hitting the moon. California wildfires creeping closer and closer to San Onofre. Not an optimal situation. Let's hope that ends. Meanwhile, yesterday you learned of the quake watch and the tropical storm development. Veterans of the channel knew the likely uptick zone, a combination, close to the powerful lows, and if the proximity of that quake and storm seemed coincidental, you should stick around. By the way, our second biggest shake of the day was south of Mexico, right where the National Hurricane Center is watching for another storm to pop up. Check it out, seriously. Meanwhile, there's a fairly strong system developing off the Japanese coastline set to trek across the sea. Top watch is here, leaving Tasmania and heading for New Zealand with some more clouds encroaching from the southwest as well. That storm system tried to blow itself out yesterday over Europe. Should be an easier day for you folks. And last but not least, the U.S. storms come quick and bark loudly, but without the bite of previous storms this season. Convergence lines of the air masses contain the watch zones going forward. Constellation Cepheus tossed a gamma ray burst at Earth yesterday afternoon. The solar sector boundary crossing was not terribly geo-effective, although it did clearly have magnetic effects and messed with near-Earth energy, despite the KP index remaining low. Solar flaring is perhaps ready to take some shots again. The spots are sparse, but we are seeing strong inter-region dependency as chain reaction surface events are showing up again this time after the initial flare destabilized filaments closer to the incoming limb. As I said, the sunspots are sparse. There appears to be potential on the incoming limb, and that is true, but as of now, the largest umbras retain separated magnetics. It's a beta group only. The dark coronal holes are fairly plain to see. Finally, a northern opening holds together while earth-facing, and it retains some moderate to above average force. Last but not least, folks, how about this? May 18th, I shared what the website members have known all year about the solar polar field data. May 19th, the data was removed. On May 20th, I promised to share the data with you if it was not put back, and on the 21st, I did just that. Over a thousand people have seen this already, and now that Stanford has put the data back, we'll call for aid in rechecking the data to make sure nothing was changed. All takers welcome. And now, brand new additions to the current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.